Hello everybody, this is Eric Virthaler92, aka Eric the Tyranoceratops, here once again. So I thought I should review my new movie, Rise of the JWs. And so this definitely was an improvement over the last movie. The pacing's better, the script is better, the acting's better, minus that girl who played the Jehovah's Witness. I didn't think she did a very good job. But, you know, the music is better. It, it is better in many ways. But the sound. The sound, you know, when people would talk. I blame that on the editing software that I was using. I used iMovie. The thing that was frustrating is that while editing the movie on with iMovie on my iPad, the sound, you know, it sounded fine. But then when I uploaded it, you know, thinking that the sound sounded good, you know, some parts sounded too loud, some parts sounded too quiet. So that frustrated me. That really did. And it's because of that is why that for my next movie, I'm not going to use iMovie anymore. Just, that was so frustrating, you know, the bigger the file, it started to lag so much. It would take me like an entire day just to edit a very small piece of the movie. Oh, that was so frustrating. And some of the lighting, one of my filmmaker friends came over to watch it today. He said that some of the lighting and some of the indoor scenes with the light pointed towards me, it was a little bit too bright. So he said, yeah, you know, you know, next time, you know, try to tone down the, so yeah, just try to tone down the lighting so yeah, for the next movie, I wanted to get better sound equipment. And you know, it was my first time ever using lighting for a movie ever. So it's more of like a trial and error thing. So now I, I know that the, the lighting that I did, it's better than the last movie, but still not perfect. But you know, I'm learning. I'm learning from all of my mistakes. People have accused me of being a know-it-all multiple times. When that's so not not true. I, I, I've changed my mind about things multiple times because of evidence. Like I used to believe in the Loch Ness Monster. But then after doing research, I then found out the Loch Ness Monster is full of crap. The Loch, there's just no evidence for it. So, you know, Regardless of what people want to say about me, I am not a know-it-all. I absolutely am willing to change my mind. You know, if I'm wrong about something and if I'm shown to be wrong, I'm willing to change my mind. So yeah, the next movie, hopefully if things go well with an investor, because that would make things a lot easier rather than me paying for the sound e equipment, they will. Because my filmmaker friend today said, you know, I, I could get like these hidden microphones in people's clothes, but he mentioned that that would cost $2,000. Oh my gosh. So if I could get investors for that, that would be amazing. But yeah, this is better in many ways from the original movie. It still has, has some issues, not really with the script or the directing, it's just with the editing software. The editing software was a major downfall for the movie because of the, the sound. But you know, I learned my lesson from pacing with the first movie. This new movie goes at a much, much better pace. And yeah, and there also was one issue that happened behind the scenes. I was wearing that amber necklace during the beginning of filming of the movie, but then my amber necklace vanished, 
you know, at some points of the movie. The reason for that, my friend Vanessa, she really wanted my amber necklace. And she was like, oh, Eric, I, I can make you a deal. I got frustrated because, you know, continuity with the movie. And two, I paid $60 for that amber necklace. So I said, okay, you, you can have it. Then I thought, okay, a way for me to explain that away is if during like the very end of the movie, if I made that fourth wall break joke saying, oh man, you can make a drinking game by how many continuity errors there are in this movie. Doing, doing that pretty much was my way of, you know, trying to be nice to Vanessa while trying to come up with, okay, what am I going to do for the movie then? Because of continuity. So, and then she felt bad asking me for the necklace. She was like, oh, so she wanted to wear it for this documentary she is going to be in. She was like, oh, okay, Eric, I'm going to mention you in the documentary that I got this necklace from you. If, if they cut my part, if they cut that out from the documentary, I will give it back. I've been trying to, to purchase a new amber necklace, but the problem is a lot of amber necklaces that I've gotten online, they're not real amber. It's just plastic. While the necklace that I got, the, you know, the amber necklace that I was wearing at some scenes during the movie was actual amber. So that was frustrating. You know, that it's just plastic. But, uh, you know. <coughs> <coughs> so. So, yeah, you know, luckily, for things that pissed me off with the first movie, I broke the fourth wall. And then, you know, and in the older things that pissed me off videos, there were, you know, there were some continuity errors there there too so yeah breaking the fourth wall really saved saved that <coughs> and there were some changes from the script originally originally it was not going to be in the movie about the now cd getting angry at kenny saying oh well you shall never question me sometimes with filmmaking you you get obstacles thrown in your way like the script called for you know for those characters in the movie meeting up in like some dungeon location from what i re recall there wasn't there's not really any as far as i know where i live at there wasn't really any dungeon places i could think of the only place i could think of was that tunnel way at msub but there was no doorway there so I thought, okay, maybe to work around it, <coughs> I could maybe uh, try to edit it, make it look like as if there's a door, or I could improvise something. And that part where, where Kenny goes, what, what are you talking about, Jehovah? There is no door. And then Kenny says, oh, and then the CD goes, oh, well, you shall never question me. That I feel like was a good thing that I improvised because that really added to the whole message of the movie of, you know, following a wolf in sheep's clothing. So that actually was, you know, a blessing in dis disguise, actually. You know, Jaws has stuff like that happen, you know, where things get thrown at, you get thrown a curveball, and then you have to think on your feet about it. I had a lot of those thrown at me you know with Vanessa asking wanting my necklace trying to find a filming location for that dungeon and you know whether when there was not a door there <coughs> so yeah I'm learning a lot I'm learning a lot you know I've noticed with each movie I make it gets better and better and better the editing software with the second movie was stressing me out so bad because it was taking way longer than necessary. 
That's one, that's one of the reasons why I had to delay the movie so many times. Because the editing software was being so difficult. And it was being difficult again when I released the movie with the audio issues. So yeah, it was fun using iMovie for the longest time. I'm not using it anymore. Will I use it for Eric the Tyrannoceratops? Sure. But for feature length movies, never again. For the visual effects shots, that was my first time ever even using that app. So <clears throat> I feel like the visual effects shots of me, you know, parroting Dragon Ball Z. That was the better parts of the visual effects. The part where Travis is making that spell. This is one of the things I really need to invest better sound equipment. He was making that chant, but you could barely hear what he was saying. Maybe I could have asked Travis, you know, to send me just a separate audio recording of him, you know, doing that chant. But yeah, um, I remember I was trying to get that tornado to follow his, to follow his broom. No, wait, to, to follow his umbrella, sorry. His umbrella. I, I only could during that first part. Well, when he was ho holding it up. But then when he was moving around, it was way too hard to get the tornado to follow it. <coughs> so that's why I had to get a little bit creative with it. And you know, it's a learning process, you know. The visual effects thing is all, all, all new to me. My first time ever using it. And you know, for that being my first time, not too bad. But yeah, um, for the most part, this movie was a lot better. Still had its problems. What would I rate it out of 10? You know, sometimes we can be our own worst critics. The the script, I can't think of any issues with it. The issues I can I can come up with is lighting and sound. So because of that, I, I, I don't feel like I can rate this the movie like an eight or nine out of ten. Ten is way too generous. Because of the, the sound kind of ruins it. My opinion, I say I'm going to give it a 6 or a 7. But yeah, that's just my own opinion though. I don't want to make this video too long. You all let me know what you think in the comments below. Take care. Bye-bye.